Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Thank you, Bobby, for replying to that. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the groundbreaking of the Center for Children's Mental Health and Development Services Building. We are very excited to be here today. This does signify a new beginning for children, youth, and families in our community. I'm Alison Demuy, uh, and uh, on behalf of CMHA, Waterloo Wellington, Vistera, and the Integrated Youth Services Network team, we thank you for attending and showing your support today. Today's event is designed to be an inspiring and informative opportunity uh, for you here and for those of you watching live on Facebook Live uh, to learn about this incredible project and uh, what's happening here in Guelph. We are honored today to be with some of our distinguished guests. Uh, we have uh, the Honorable Michael Tobolo, Associate Minister of Mental Health and Addictions, Dr. Joanna Henderson, Executive Director of Youth Wellness Hubs Ontario, Guelph MP Lloyd Longfield, there you are. <laughs> uh, we have uh, Guelph MPP Mike Schreiner, uh, Fergus MPP Ted Arnett, as well as Guelph Mayor Cam Guthrie and many other special guests that are here alongside the very hard-working team at the Canadian Mental Health Association of Waterloo Wellington. <laughs> Groundbreaking ceremonies are a chance for us to signal a build, a growth, a new beginning, and soon we will turn the soil uh, to symbolize this transformation of this space into something wonderful. But as we gather today, on this plot of land, let's start by acknowledging our past. So with that, I'd like to ask Sabrina Abdul, who is a symbol of Guelph's bright future, to remind us of the importance of the land on which we sit today. Hello, everyone. As we gather, we are reminded that Guelph is situated on treaty land that is steeped in rich Indigenous history and has been home to a variety of peoples over the millennia. Today, this area has become home to many First Nations, Inuits, and Métis people. As a community, we have a responsibility for the stewardship of the land on which we live and work. We acknowledge today the historic Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation of the Anishinaabeg peoples the First Nation people who were the treaty signatories of the territory on which we are gathering. We recognize and deeply appreciate their historic connection to this place. Thank you. We're doing COVID protocol, and so you'll see me only using this microphone, and every time Melissa's going to come up and clean the other one. So if you're asking what's going on. <laughs> All right. This time, I would like to invite up one of my most favorite people to come and chat with you a little bit. This is my boss, Helen Fishburn. Uh, Helen is the CEO of CMHA, is the heart and the soul of our team. 
She's our fearless leader. She is our visionary. Um, but we also call her the big cheese. So you want to come up. I'd say more like the petite fromage. <laughs> excited I am to be here in front of you all today um, on behalf of CMHA Waterloo Wellington. Our team has been planning this moment for two and a half years and I actually can't believe it's true. I'm sure Robert you're in the same boat as me today. It's it's like a pinch me moment here. So thank you all so much for taking the time to be here and to celebrate with us. Today is an absolutely incredible day for children, youth and their families in Guelph and Wellington. Today we're breaking ground on a state-of-the-art building, a beautiful new site to support the wellness of our children, youth, and their families, designed by uh, all of our children, youth, and families in this area, and our staff, of course, as well. The center will create a safe and welcoming and accessible space for young people in our community to come here and have their needs met. I think the best way to fully understand how and why we got here is actually to tell the story of this journey. Like any good story, it starts with the need. And this is the sad part of the story. Children, youth, and their families are struggling and suffering with mental health and addiction issues and developmental challenges more now than ever. Thanks to this thing called COVID, we have seen a 40% increase in our referrals to children's services and to our agency overall. Just to put that number in context for you, prior to the pandemic, we had 11 kids waiting for uh, to see one of our child psychiatrists. As of this morning, there's 172 kids waiting. Prior to the pandemic, we had 20 kids waiting for our counseling and treatment program. And as of this morning, we have 122 kids waiting. Prior to the pandemic, we had a two month waiting for our child and youth eating disorders program. Now there's a 15 month Prior to the pandemic, we had 4,000 calls a month coming into our Here 24-7 service. Now we have 6,500 calls a month, most of them crisis calls. I could keep going, but you get the picture here. Too many young people and their families are suffering. Yes, there's a lot of children and families and youth that we support and we provide treatment. We just wish we could do more. It breaks our heart to have them wait for care that they need and they deserve. So let's get back to the story. When a child is anxious, overwhelmed, not meeting their milestones, they need a warm, welcoming, and safe space. Our current children's services building does not allow for that. We outgrew it years ago. We, we not only needed a space that would be inviting and bright and roomy for our programming, we also needed a space large enough to invite our service partners to join us. We all know that our system of care is fragmented. Many people of all ages have to seek support from many different providers and locations just to get their holistic needs met. We wanted to create a space for our kids and youth so they could have their needs met in one spot to make it easy for them to find support to have that care be integrated and focused on the whole person and family. You will hear an amazing update on the status of our youth wellness, help, youth wellness hubs very soon from Dr. Joanna Henderson and Cindy Forsyth. You'll also hear some amazing stories about the value and impact of our services from Holly and her family. So we set out to find that space that would allow us to make this big system change to better support the needs of our youth and that's where I cue Robert Eilers and the Vestera team. Actually, to share the next part of this story, I'm going to ask Robert of the Vestera team to come and join me.
Honestly, I can't believe I'm here. I feel like this is surreal. I feel this, as if we're in some sort of a movie. This, to, to be here, to have this day finally arrived. For those of you who know me well, they'll know that I'm an introvert. I don't do these things. This is not me. I prefer the quiet life, the anonymous life. But I'm here because this is important. Well, I'm not going to repeat what was already said about the importance, which Helen has articulated perfectly. I do want to tell a little bit of a story of how we got here. Back in 2014, seven years ago, we bought the property with the old McDonald's, which was standing right about over there, where the big hole is. We didn't really have a plan other than it seemed like a great location, and my God, we needed to do something with this, this part of town. Then we ended up buying the little property next door, and all of a sudden we had a nice parcel of land that we could do something special with. So as any good developer would do, we looked at housing. After all, that's our business. We build and manage businesses, sorry, we build and manage buildings, commercial buildings, and especially residential rental housing. Besides, who doesn't need housing? So we started the process, put together conceptual drawings, worked on the site plan, at our pre-consultation meetings with the City of Guelph, and came up for a concept with two towers, 19 and 21 stories, similar to what's down, down the road, down there. One was gonna be affordable residential rental units, and one was gonna be condos, which we would sell off to pay for the rental one. Then sometime in November 2018, our office got a phone call from a real estate agent by the name of John Lynn from Colliers, who asked if we would consider a commercial use for this property. An employee of mine who picked up the phone answered, nope, we're building residential condos on the site. And said this in a not particularly nice way either, by the way. When I found out about this, I told this employee, you should never, ever say no without first listening to what the proposal is. Then you can always still politely say no. So we called back, and when we were told it was the Canadian Mental Health Association, I was immediately sold. All the work we had done to date, and we were far down the road of that work. It was torn up, thrown in the garbage, and after that, CMHA was it. Why are we doing this, my employee asked. We can make a lot more money building and selling condos. On this, we might even barely break even. Well, he had a point, especially seeing the ridiculous prices for condos these days. I hope there's no other developers here. <laughs> <laughs> they certainly were much more profitable. But that's not the point here. You see, I was one of those kids. And I was one of those kids that organizations such as Canadian Mental Health Association worked tirelessly for, day in, day out, global pandemic or not. Let's face it, we all have times in our life when mental health is not what we would like it to be. And that's really putting it mildly. I went through three crises in my life. First as a teenager, doing things I certainly shouldn't be doing things I certainly shouldn't be mentioning here. I hope there's no police around. Um, but then again, I had a second event when I was divorced 20 years ago and mentally crashed. And finally, when I was told that I had cancer in 2012, potentially terminal, which thankfully didn't happen, otherwise I wouldn't be here. The reality is this. We all have mental health issues at times in our lives. And organizations such as Canadian Mental Health Association are the ones that help us that support us, that save us. Let me be clear on this. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for organizations like Canadian Mental Health Association. I wouldn't be in front of you right now if it wasn't for them. They and their many staff, volunteers, support workers allowed me to be here and to become who I am today. So if I never do another project in my life, and that's not gonna happen, I'm only 52 years old, too young to retire, besides I'd be bored. But if I never did another project in my life, this is the one I would like to end my career with. Of everything I've done in my life, this is the one I'm most proud of for several reasons. First, for me personally, this is coming full circle in my life. This allows me to enable those who helped me become who I am today. I never expected to be where I am today, but I know this. I was lucky enough that somebody took an interest in me and helped me when I needed it most. And if we are lucky enough to achieve a privileged position in life, 
which is where I am now, that we have the responsibility to not be selfish and not just to think about ourselves, but to give back to us who gave us so much and to help the less fortunate. This life is not about money or perceived power or what our business card says. It's about humanity. It's about all of us. And together as a community, we can achieve anything. Secondly, the teamwork on this has been incredible. The hard work, the dedication, the emotion, the heart that went into this project by both the team at CMHA and our staff at Vistera has been rare. <coughs> the respect and teamwork we built is unique. This is how development should be. Teamwork, not confrontation, fighting, arguing, backstabbing that it usually is. For those who don't know development, I can tell you, it's certainly not fun. Third, the team that designed this, from BJC Articles that designed a beautiful, stunning, airy building, to MP, that did the site plan, to DEI, that did the structural, you guys all did an amazing job. Then there's Scott Patterson who guided us through the city processes, which is, unfortunately, not always an easy task. <laughs> Sorry, I had to put that in there. <laughs> And then there's Desjardins, who financed the construction with a drive and commitment I've never seen in 20 years of doing this, so thank you for that. While there are too many to name individually, thank you to all of you who worked on this project. And lastly, there's my team at Vestera. A special thank goes out to them for running the business, for doing their jobs day in, day out, to allow me the freedom and time to focus on getting this done. Without them, this would have never happened. A huge thank you to the team Vestera. And as a final note, let me s share a text message exchange Helen and I has had as we prepared for this event a few days ago. I do apologize for this. <laughs> <laughs> she wrote me, we couldn't do this without you. We are better together. And I'm so happy <coughs> we have an amazing team around us. The best people. Exclamation mark, exclamation, exclamation mark. I agree, by the way. And she also wrote, she says, I'm awesome, with a smiley face. But that's not the point. What I wanted to say was read my response to her. I'll just pull it up here. And I said, oh, thanks. But I don't feel awesome. I'm just the result of what organizations such as yours are able to do for people's lives. You make the difference every day to countless people. I was just one of the lucky ones. And when I see the hours, the effort, the dedication that your team has invested in making your community better during this global pandemic, you're the heroes. I'm just one of the many that enables you to do what you do. But thank you for the compliment, it's appreciated. These people are the heroes, not me. I just feel privileged to be able to enable them to do the hard work that they do every day. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for everything that you do. Now let's give the children and youth of our community a chance to live the life you've helped me to achieve. You certainly made mine better. So I'd like to propose a healthy applause to our heroes at CMHA who make our community a better place. hold on there. Got to get back to my story. And I think there's still one more part of the story that we need to share today. So let me pick up the story where Robert went, where Robert left off. And thank you, Robert, for your courageous sharing of your own personal story, as well as the journey to build this building. As we have worked with our incredible project team, many of which are here, are, are, are here today, to design this building over the past two years, Robert and his team have heard a lot and learned a lot about what we need and what we do to support our children and youth. It has moved them deeply, as you can see. That passion, along with the story that Robert just courageously shared about his own healing journey, 
led the Vistera team to make a huge decision. And as I say these words out loud and publicly for the very first time, I'm still in awe. The Vesteris team has decided to donate the entire building to CMHA. Woo! Yes, you heard that correctly, $50 million. As far as we know, this is the largest donation to a community mental health organization in Canadian history. Right here in the world. so he's hating this moment, <laughs> however, as you can imagine, it is difficult to put into words what this actually means for our community. It's, it's mind-boggling. I mean, how do you even thank someone for a $50 million donation? This kind of generosity is just unbelievable. And every time I say that to Robert, and I've had a year to try and wrap my head around this, and I still haven't got it, but every time I say that to Robert, he says, the biggest thanks you can give me is to provide care and support and services to the children and youth and families in this community. That's hard. One thing is also for sure it will go a long way to bring mental health and addiction issues out of the shadows where we have lived for far too long, and it's about damn time. Robert. Robert's personal story and incredible act of generosity says it all mental health matters. So that's our story, and now you know the story, you will understand, although we're constructing a beautiful new building, this story is not about the building. This is not about the bricks and mortar. This is about heart. The passion, the care, the empathy, the dedication to the children and youth in Guelph and Wellington. This new center will stand as a proud symbol of that investment in our kids. And you also know the story is far from over. We're really just getting started. And wait until those doors open in this beautiful new building, which you're gonna see behind me. We're gonna have a party then. Robert has thanked the amazing team that it's worked alongside with us for the past two years. It's an incredible group of people and professionals I'm honored to work with every day. Krista, Ken, Barb, Arlene, John, Narmi, Matt, Jolene, so many more. Thank you for your incredible efforts to get us here. But I also want to say some thanks for my own team, and Robert, thank you for thanking them as well. First to the amazing staff from CMHA Children's Services who will be in this building every single day, pouring their hearts and souls into our community, uh, especially with kids with complex needs. The work is not easy, and they do it tirelessly and amazingly. Under the leadership of our Children's Director, Krista Siblin, and managers Brett Friesen, Jennifer Miles, and Lisa Miller, who have an incredible group of dedicated staff who work around the clock. They are my heroes. Some of our team is here today. If you work in children's services, please stand up. All of you guys, don't be shy. Krista, Brett, stand up. This is the amazing group. I wish we could have everyone here. Second, I want to thank sincerely our leadership, my senior leadership team and our board of directors who have been supporting me on this journey. A project of this size is risky, it's challenging. We leaned into this risk. I kept saying, just trust me, just trust me. And look how we are today. It's incredible. Thank you for your support and guidance. It has meant the world to me. I now have the honor of welcoming the Honorable Minister Tobolo, who is the Minister of Mental Health and Addictions in Ontario. I've had the privilege of meeting Minister Tobolo several times, and he is amazing friend and support to the CMHA family. Our amazing CEO, Camille Kinville from uh, CMHA Ontario, can attest to that. 
Not only is Minister Tobolo a politician with passion and vision, he also has some street cred in this industry of ours. He's been a mental health and addictions clinician in his early years. I don't think there is anyone more fitting from Queen's Park that understands more the meaning and importance of what's happening here today. So I'm absolutely thrilled to welcome you to the podium. Thank you all. Thank you uh, so much for that. And uh, uh, good morning, everyone. Bonjour, Annie. Um, I'm, I'm very pleased to be here this morning. Uh, even listening from Robert to your story um, reminds me why I'm here and why it's so important that we work together to build systems that work, that are integrated, that are connected, and uh, you know, it, it's, uh, it's very, very hard to follow you and the announcement this morning because, <laughs> I mean, it's absolutely incredible. And I, you know, the private-public partnerships is the direction that we need to do. Gover government cannot do everything. But in situations like this, where we have the opportunity to partner up and to create opportunities to help individuals and build that continuum of care, it's extremely important that, that we take those opportunities and we do that. And, and this is incredible. I mean, to be here, um, you know, to put a shovel in the ground, to um, initiate something that was a dream not too long ago. I think it was about two years ago, maybe two and a half years ago, I was here, and I was awed at two things. We were at the golf course. One was the passion that the community had. It was a Rotary Club meeting, a breakfast meeting that they had invited me to speak to. And um, there were two things that I remember, the passion, the, the energy, and, and there was a talk about maybe, you know, a youth wellness hub. And by that time, I'd seen them and the work that Joanna Henderson has done to create probably one of the most incredible opportunities to help young people with attachment issues. You know, the clinicians here understand that a lot of time attachment issues and how uh, children uh, uh, live their lives and the situations they have around them are very difficult situations and having a safe space where they can actually grow and thrive and learn and share these are opportunities that change a person's life and Robert's story is a, a, an example of that and these are things that we need to incorporate if we're going to build a continuum of care if we're going to provide education and supports to our youth so that we can deal with the issues when they first arise, not later on in life when it becomes a lot more expensive and typically there's a lot more tragedy attached to it. So for me, um, that was one of the two things. The second thing was I was amazed at the size of the Christmas tree in the lobby. And then someone told me they cut it from the back of the property and I thought, wow. You know, that would never happen in Toronto because the only place you could cut a tree that size would be probably at Queen's Park. And I'm sure the OPP would have something to say about it, but it was it was an amazing opportunity. And you know, the team, uh, I have to say, I can't speak uh, enough about how proud I am of the work that Camille does with CMHA, um, the innovation that takes place at every level, all the directors. I mean, the passion, uh, you know, in Italian we always say, l'amore e passione you know, the love and the passion, you know, people don't do things because they have to. They do them because they want to, and that's the difference. And that's what we need to have more of, especially in the area of mental health and addictions. This can't be a job. And the people that I've met, most of the people that I've met, and especially the people at KMH, at CMHA, have been people that come forward and are, are, are people with a vocation. They do their job not because they have to, but because they want to. And they're making differences in everyone's lives. And every opportunity I get to steal one of her ideas, or an idea from any of the other um, uh, people in uh, CMHA, I do. For instance, the youth of uh, the uh, mobile health units that will start popping up around the province. Um, collaboration, working together. But you know what? I do always acknowledge that I steal the ideas, though, right? So, but, Fantastic work that's being done, and I, I can't tell you how proud I am of uh, CMHA and our continued work uh, uh, in the sector. And, and Joanna Henderson, I have to say thank you to you too. Um, I've spent a lot of time with you talking about how we can innovate, expand, uh, create new opportunities. You know, we're dealing with eating disorders now at a prevalence rate that I've never seen before. And what can we do utilizing the youth wellness hubs and integrating programming to help kids in the community as opposed to waiting till they need acute care in hospitals and of course uh, um, 
not necessarily always with the greatest results. So these types of things are fantastic. And I, again, appreciate your dedication and your vocation to, 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 to helping young people and developing the, these partnerships. And these partnerships are extremely important. You know, when you think about the investments we make in our children and youth today, and the impact that that has in the future, you know, 25%, we know 25% of addictions and mental health issues could have been dealt with at the level of children and youth. And then you hear the backlog, the wait times, you know, we need to do more because we can make a difference in these kids' lives and we can let them, we can give them the opportunities to live healthy lives later on in life. And if you don't think that matters, you know, let's talk about it from an economic standpoint. 500,000 days a week are lost in Canada for, uh, from work for people that have a mental health or addiction issue. Now, wouldn't it be wonderful if those investments today provide us a healthier population in the future? But the time has to start now. And again, when it comes to government investments, I came to, to this job you know, with $3.8 billion to invest over 10 years. And I thought to myself, I am gonna revolutionize mental health and addictions in the province of Ontario. Until you start making the investments and you start seeing just how many gaps and how much fragmentation and lack of access and all the problems we have to deal with. That $3.8 billion doesn't go very far. But it can go a lot further if we utilize it for investments in programming and not bricks and mortar. So when an opportunity like this presents itself, that someone can come forward and say, I'll give you the bricks and mortar. If you've got the people that can do the job, I will give you the bricks and mortar and give you the opportunity to make a difference in people's lives. I don't know how to say thank you. I don't know how, what I can do more than say thank you, but I, I'm, telling, I, 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 I'm absolutely um, overwhelmed with that kind of generosity, that kind of spirit of helping community and giving back. But you hear the story. How many more people will we save as a result of a, 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 having a place for people to come to like this? How many of those people will be inspired to do what Robert did? And I know that there are going to be many because many of the people that have either a mental health issue or an addiction issue. I've worked for, for 10 years with, with young people with addictions and mental health issues. And all, every single one of them deserved a second chance because it wasn't their fault that they had that addiction or mental health issue but they needed the opportunity. They were just a little different. They needed that help. And the, one that, that the ones that do get that, they recover, they get married, they have children, they have businesses, they thrive and they give back to the community. And that's what we want. We want a community that works together, that collaborates, that provides us, that, that gives us those opportunities to help other people as well. So I, again, I'm overwhelmed. Uh, the, you know, the, this pandemic has also you know, when you think about where we are today and the impact that it's had on the services that we are able to provide, um, you know, this industry, this, this sector has done incredible work in terms of pivoting to be able to do uh, services virtually. But we're coming out of the pandemic now and we need to make sure that we have places for our youth to go. We need to have those supports in place. And, you know, I'm, I'm so happy to be here and, and, and to continue contributing what we can contribute, and that means programming. You know, we committed over $31 million this year to help improve access to specialized mental health treatment services to reduce wait lists and wait times and support the mental health and well-being of children and youth by addressing the increased demands that have been created as a result of COVID-19. And some of those investments include $2.7 million that went to the establishing of four additional youth wellness hubs, one right here, one in Renfrew, one in Timmins, and one in Windsor. And you have my commitment that these will be looked at as significant growth areas for our government from the standpoint of investments in the future. Because again, investing in our kids is gonna make an incredible difference in the future. And these hubs, you know, they look after kids between the ages of 12 and 25. On the continue with care, on the roadmap to wellness, that will be considered our youth and adolescents. And they're providing primary care, walk-in access to individuals to help them with things like their mental health issues, substance use, primary care, education, employment, training, housing, and other community and social services. Because again, you can't help the individual unless you look at the social determinants of health and ensure 
that the supports are there for them as well. And developing a hub like this provides those supports. It provides that continuum of care and ensures that no one will be left without the supports going forward. So extremely important for us to see uh, investments like this in community-based supports. Again, our psychiatric hospitals, our institutions are doing fabulous work, but we've got to remember that a lot of organizations in the community are providing incredible supports and many times doing it with less money than they actually need to be able to, to do the work that they're doing. And our government is focused on that part of the continuum of care because again, we know where the heavy lifting is being done and you and your team are doing incredible work. You're all doing the heavy lifting in this province. We recognize that and we want to ensure that we're there to continue to support it. For me, supporting our youth and children is probably the most important thing that we need to do. It is a bit of an issue for me when I sit trying to think where our investments are going because I have to deal with not just our children and youth, but I have to think about all the adults that are also uh, in situations where they need support. And it's not easy to make a decision when it comes to investments, when you're thinking about the kids and try to educate and build resiliency and the adults to have to build capacity to help them. But with people like Robert, we're able to focus our dollars on doing and building, planning and doing the things that will help people um, as opposed to have to think about building the bricks and mortar. Again, I, I can talk forever, unfortunately. I, 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 not everybody wants to listen to me forever. I spent, um, I'm doing my doctorate in clinical psychology, and this, to me, um, has been a revelation being the Minister of Mental Health and Addictions while doing that doctoral work. Because it's given me an opportunity to look at a lot of the academics that perhaps a, a minister wouldn't normally get a chance to see and incorporate some evidence-based um, or at least support evidence-based uh, uh, treatment and, and, and strategies that I know all of you in the sector well, but unfortunately not many politicians understand because it's just not a specialty for them. But I appreciate all the efforts of all of you. My door is always open. Camille, you know that, and Joanna, you know that. You, you always have access to me because the best ideas come from the people in the field that are doing the heavy lifting and providing us with what we need to make informed decisions. So God bless you all. Thank you so much, Robert. I don't know what else I can say to you other than thank you, thank you, thank you. On behalf of the Premier, on behalf of our entire government, thank you for, for being here and being the broad shoulders that CMHA can now spread its wings and fly and show us exactly what they're able to do. So again, thank you very much. Thank you, Minister. Uh, just a few more speakers before we uh, we turn the soil. So uh, next, I'd like to introduce Dr. Joanna Henderson. Dr. Henderson is the acting director of the Margaret and Wallace McCain Center for Child, Youth, and Family Mental Health at the Center for Addictions and Mental Health, CAMH. Same letters, different place. <laughs> That's right. And is also the executive director of Youth Wellness Hubs Ontario. Uh, Dr. Henderson's work was the inspiration behind all that we are building here today. So I'm very happy to welcome Dr. Henderson up. Thank you, everyone. It's very exciting to be here today. And Robert is on the move trying to hide. There is nothing I can say that will top what happens when community members make the kind of commitment that Robert's made here today. And what a fantastic pleasure to just be here, to be part of this, um, and to really have the opportunity to recognize uh, your contribution and the contribution of everyone uh, in the room today. I'm looking at Marty from the Rotary Club who started this whole process for me. Um, and, and in part for your community, but it takes everyone in the community to really make this kind of change happen. We're at an exciting point in youth mental health system transformation in the province of Ontario. Minister Tobolo and his government have made incredible investments in children's mental health, youth mental health, really laying out 
not just a document that is the roadmap to wellness, but in fact, a roadmap to wellness. The vision of One Stop Shop Youth Wellness Hubs co-created co -created with youth. And I want to emphasize this because it's not about people like me who are experts deciding what needs to happen. It's about partnership, partnering with youth, with families, with service providers, and with the evidence together, all different kinds of evidence, to create new models of service delivery to improve access to high quality, can't forget the quality piece, we need the quality too, youth-friendly mental health and substance use services throughout Ontario. And we now have 14 communities who are uh, operating services, or about to start operating services, and of course the timing couldn't be more critical. Prior to the beginning of the pandemic, Results from Kim H's 2019 Ontario Student Drug Use and Health Survey. This is a survey that's been running in our schools for 40 years, um, for grade sevens through grade 12, monitoring their substance use and mental health and other aspects of health over time. Um, revealed that more students, since the survey started measuring student-related perceptions of mental health, perceived their mental health to be poor or fair. One in six students had experienced thoughts of suicide in the preceding year. It was the highest rate ever found in on, uh, the Ontario Student Drug Use uh, Health Survey um, history. And, and that was before the pandemic. We've been monitoring the needs of young people as the pandemic has unfolded. And youth with pre-existing mental health concerns have experienced significant setbacks and really importantly, youth who have never experienced significant mental health difficulties before have started to experience life-changing significant difficulties. The pandemic has disrupted the building blocks of mental wellness. Our social connectedness, our, our young people's ability to feel productive, productive through sports, through arts, through school, through employment, it's disrupted all of that. And their feelings, uh, their capacity to feel safe and secure, both in their communities and, and sort of globally in the world. For youth, our services need to be interconnected. They need to represent the interconnectedness of their lives. Their lives aren't parsed out into these separate pieces. They're all interwoven. And we need to respond directly with them, for them, connected to their, what they identify as essential. And Youth Wellness Health Ontario is designed, co-designed with youth to make these uh, services available across the province and meet these needs. Today, I want to express my congratulations to the Guelph Wellington team, obviously. Um, this is a huge accomplishment and it takes so many people to make work like this happen. I especially want to acknowledge the youth members of the team and this is a piece of the uh, work that's happened and Cindy Forsyth has had shown so much leadership together with other members of the community to bring youth together to hear what they need here in this community. And so I want to acknowledge their contribution um, and the role you're playing in leading the way for youth mental health system transformation in the Guelph Wellington region, but also provincially and nationally. I'm thrilled to have Guelph Wellington, Youth Wellness Hubs Ontario is thrilled to have Guelph Wellington join our community, and I just want to say congratulations again and thank you. Thank you, Dr. Henderson. Next, I'm so proud to introduce the amazing, the inspiring, the formidable Cindy Forsythe. For those of you who know Cindy, Cindy is the inaugural director of the Integrated Youth Services Network. She's responsible for bringing this vision to fruition and working collaboratively with all of the partners that are involved in this. Cindy, would you come on up here and say a few words? Later. <laughs> uh, I 
would like to thank you all for joining us today to celebrate an incredibly important day for children, youth, and families in Guelph and Wellington County. It is truly remarkable to see how our community is opening up conversations of surrounding mental health. Right now, there are over 146 youth between the ages of 12 and 26 living in Wellington County and Guelph. And based on the current trends we are witnessing, over half are in need of children, youth, mental health services. To see you all here today in support of this cause reflects the change that is upon us. Today's announcement about the center, and I'm getting a little emotional, and Robert, you're to blame for that. <laughs> Sorry. Today's announcement about the Center for Children's Mental Health and Developmental Building is monumental in many ways, and the excitement has not stopped there. On behalf of what was formerly known as the Integrated Youth Services Network, I am excited to announce that we have rebranded and evolved into what will officially be known as The Grove. The Grove is a collaborative project with the aim of providing youth ages 12 to 26 with the support they need to build positive, bright futures. Each site will be known as the Grove Hub, with seven sites across Wellington County and Guelph. The Grove Hub's goal is to build a more effective health and social services system through integration and collaboration to better meet the needs of youth. The center for Children's Mental Health and Development Services will host one of these locations known as the Grove North Guelph. As safe spaces that offer access to recreation, wellness programs, and mental health services, local youth will have places to gather and communicate. These services are all co-designed with local youth direct input to ensure that their needs are met. We've been working with them for over two and a half years. The centralized information system at each site is truly a way to improve the ease of youth and encourage people to actually come to these spaces and use the resources that are available. The grand opening of each location in Wellington County will take place over the next um, few months and we are currently open to youth as restrictions allow. These hubs are located in Palmerston, operated by our partner Mental Township, in Erin, operated by our partner East Wellington Community Services, and in Fergus, hosted by CMHA Waterloo Wellington. The Grove North Guelph, located in the Center for Mental Health and Development Service Building, is set to be complete for some time in early 2023. Our site at the University of Guelph will be open late this fall, and the sites at the YMCA of Three Rivers Guelph location and Sheldell Family Gateway will open later in 2023. It is time for change and we are so thankful for the generous support and funding from private donors and the provincial government that has acknowledged the need for change and for the contributions that have made all of this possible. In June of this year, the Integrated Youth Services Network of Wellington County and Guelph announced it will receive over a million dollars towards important operating costs that will support youth mental health services in our community. A portion of this funding came from Wellington County to specifically address the needs of rural youth and the other portion came from the provincial government. With this funding we officially became a Youth Wellness Hubs Ontario site and will work and learn in collaboration with sites from across Ontario to address the systemic change required to meet the needs of our youth. This significant investment will ensure that what is known now as the Grove Hubs can strengthen their operating capabilities so that struggling youth will have access to the support they need when they need it. Our children and youth inspire us every day and it's time to give back and provide safe spaces where they can continue to learn and grow without hesitation or setbacks. On behalf of the Groves Hubs, thank you for being here today and showing your support for children, youth, and families in our community. The work that will take place within this building and all of our current and future sites 
is nothing short of life changing. And it is incredible that at work at this scale will be taking place in our very own community. Thank you and please enjoy the rest of your day. Our last speaker is our most important speaker. No offense, Kimster. <laughs> I'm uh, very happy to have Holly Cerbera join us. Holly is the what, the chair? I'll just say, you're very much involved with our family and client council, and uh, you're a mom. And so Holly's here to talk a little bit about her story. today for this joyous event. My name is Holly Severa, and I'm joining you today as one of the co-chairs of CMHA Waterloo Wellington's Family Advisory Council and the Guelph Chapter Leader for Parents for Children's Mental Health. And most importantly, as a mother of three wonderful children who have benefited immensely from the children and youth services that CMHA Waterloo Wellington provides. When you begin your journey as a parent, during that first moment embracing the child in your arms, you don't think that someday your child may need the services of your local CMHA. However, I can tell you from personal experience that when your child's mental health is spiraling out of control, having access to CMHA Waterloo Wellington clinicians, psychiatrists, case managers, and other professionals who provide invaluable comfort and support can literally be life-saving for your children. The healthcare system, specifically the mental health system, is difficult to navigate even at the best of times. When families are feeling overwhelmed during times of crisis, their resilience and resources both financially and emotionally are stretched very thin. And at this point, finding the appropriate help for your child can be very overwhelming. And you can easily fall through the gaps, leaving those who need help to suffer in silence, even though help is available. The construction of the Center for Children's Mental Health Developmental Services Building will provide a one-stop shop for all children and youth support in our community, as well as a central location to access complex mental health resources for children and youth. Families will no longer have to scope out multiple locations and supports, as this building will close some of those gaps for our children who are at high risk and make this journey for families slightly more bearable. It truly is a blessing that all the services for our vulnerable children and youth will now be housed in a single location here in Guelph. The reality is, the pandemic has taken a large toll on our community and has driven significant increases in the number of children and youth that require the services from CMHA Waterloo Wellington. We are very blessed to be embarking on this new endeavor in our very own community. With the generous support of several donors, the government and our community to ensure its success. I especially want to thank the leaders of CMHA Waterloo Wellington who brought the vision for the Center for Children's Mental Health and Developmental Services Building. They brought it to life. The managers, the staff, the clinicians at CMHA Waterloo Wellington are the heart and soul of our community, helping those in need who survive and thrive amidst adversity every single day. I also want to thank the several donors that have seen the value in investing in children and youth of our community. This building will not only serve as a place of healing for our children and youth and their families, but also a place of safety and support for them to flourish and prosper. These generous donations, government initiatives, and dedicated work of our local mental health agency truly provides hope for families throughout this region. Thank you. Hey, 
thank you Holly and your family who's here with us today. And thank you to all of the incredible speakers that we've had advocating for children, youth, and our families here in Guelph and in Wellington. So, shall we finally get this started? Let's make this groundbreaking official. So I'll invite uh, Helen, Robert, uh, Minister Tabolo, and Holly to come on up and be the first to break the ground on this important building. Guelph well, MPP Mike Schreiner, Fergus MPP Ted Arnott, and Mayor Cam Guthrie. Can you come on up as well and join us? Dr. Henderson, Cindy.
Thank you to everybody for joining us. Feel free to stay and mingle and, and walk about the site. Otherwise, we'll see you at the grand opening.